Sex and death. In some species, males are only seen as a method of fertilization and are simply cast aside after reproduction. Only their genes are needed. So here are some disposable males in the animal kingdom. First up is the Antichinus. The Antichinus is a small marsupial in Australia that actually mates itself to death. During the breeding season, females go into heat all at once. This triggers the males to go into a mating frenzy for about two weeks. All this mating causes an increase in stress hormones in the males, which causes their tissues and organs to disintegrate. This creates internal bleeding and they all ultimately die. This mating to death strategy didn't evolve as a way to leave more food available for the offspring. Instead, it's thought to be more of a way for the males to maximize the chances of passing on their genes. More mating hopefully means more offspring. So they go crazy. Sounds amazing, right? Except for the whole internal bleeding to death thing. Next is the obvious praying mantis. After mating, the female eats the male's head and sometimes even the body. Why is this? Well, in some species, females don't always eat their mates. One study showed that when females did eat their mates, it improved their body condition and they produced heavier egg cases than females that didn't eat their mates. Also, females in poor condition were more likely to eat their mates than females in good condition. All this suggests that eating the males post-coitus increases the female's fertility. Brandane, will you marry me? And with this ring, you promise not to eat me? <gasps> Oh my god, come here! Ooh, uh, this is fake. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that was about. Honeybees! The male drones are born just to mate. They do absolutely nothing, except assist in hive temperature regulation, and are even fed and taken care of by the female worker bees. Quite a life, huh? Not so fast! During the mating season, males swarm just for the chance to mate with the new queen, and the several males that do get to mate with the queen die as their penis explodes! Sometimes even an audible pop can be heard. The head of the male's penis stays inside the female, not to stop other males from mating, but to ensure that its own semen stays inside. The queen has no remorse for these male drones, as she mates with many of them and leaves a trail of dead drones behind her. After mating, the queen stores all the sperm that is needed for the roughly one million eggs that she will lay over the course of the next three years of her life. The Anglerfish some species of anglerfish reproduce via parasitism. The anglerfish we're all used to seeing are actually all females. The males are a lot smaller and are born solely to find a female and mate. If they don't, then they will die due to the inability to feed from an underdeveloped gut. The males are typically born with excellent olfactory organs which help them locate females in the vast depths of the ocean. Once located, the male bites the female and releases an enzyme that dissolves both her skin and his mouth, fusing the two together. Their circulatory system is now one and the male receives nutrients from the female. Over time, all the male organs degenerate until all that is left is its testes to periodically pump in sperm when the female is ready to lay eggs. Like a beating heart. <laughs> but instead they're testicles. <laughs> you think harboring a male's testicles for sperm is weird? Well, how about harboring an entire penis? Well, the male paper nautilus doesn't actually have a penis. It uses one of its tentacles. A penis tentacle. The male and female are sexually dimorphic in that the female has a shell and the male does not. When reproducing, the male will place a packet of sperm on his penis tentacle, where it will then detach and free swim itself over to the female and attach itself under the female's mantle. Without a penis, and frankly no reason to live anymore, the male dies shortly after and the female stores the sperm and penis tentacle until it's time to fertilize her eggs. Ah, it's weird to think that some species only need males for their penis or testicles. But some species don't need males at all. In some species, the females actually change sex to become the male. This is the case with the common reed frog. When there's an absence of males during the breeding season, some females will start to assume male calling posture. At first, the females can't produce any sounds, but their vocal sacs eventually developed and can create full advertisement calls. 
They even begin behaving and fighting like males and eventually fully change sex and go on to mate with females and successfully fertilize eggs. Now clownfish can change their sex as well. Clownfish are actually all born male. They live in schools of males and the biggest and most dominant male will change its sex into a female. The now female will pair off and mate with the next dominant male. If something happens to the female, like she gets eaten by a barracuda, then the dominant breeding male will change sex into a female and the next most dominant male will take the available spot as the new breeding male. Yeah, so remember in Finding Nemo when Nemo's mom got eaten by a barracuda? Well, Nemo's dad would have turned into his new mom and then a new dad would have come along. Yeah, major plot hole there, Disney. Way to go. Well, I'm Travis. Hey, if you guys like this video, be sure to share, subscribe, comment, like, whatever else you can do with it. Um, you can watch some of my other videos too. They're just as dumb, if not dumber. Or don't. Don't do anything. I don't care.